If you can't hear the bass lines in songs and it stops you from figuring them out for yourself, then this is the video for you. Hey, I'm Luke McIntosh from becomeabassist.com and in this bass lesson, I'll show you four ways you can learn to hear the bass in songs so you can figure out what the bass is doing and do it fast. The first three ways take a little bit longer, but they're way more useful to you, but I'll also show you one quick and dirty way just in case you're in a real hurry. This is a super common problem for bass players when they're just starting out. I remember uh, struggling with hearing bass lines for myself. I'd be trying to learn a song, but I'd have a hell of a time trying to hear the bass, especially if it was mixed low in a song. Sure, I knew it was in there, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out what the notes were. It was a lot easier if the guitar was playing the same thing as the bass, but that wasn't always happening. Eventually, I'd pick a note that I thought the bass was playing, only to realize that I was playing the notes of the melody. In the end, I'd get frustrated and really down on myself, and I'd have to trawl through terrible tab sites on the internet and try and find one that sounded like it worked with what was on the actual recording. Fast forward to now, though, and I have absolutely no trouble picking out the bass lines in songs. They're as clear as day to me now in a way that wasn't possible for me before. Even bass lines from random songs on the radio will jump out at me and I can see how the bass line would be played even before I know what the actual notes are. It took me years to get to this point though. It's not something that happens magically overnight, but there are four things you can do to make sure you start hearing the bass lines more clearly and I want to share them with you right now. The first thing you can do is check out a whole ton of isolated bass lines and then listen to the full recording. I'm not sure if you know, but there are heaps and heaps and heaps of songs where someone has posted the original recorded bass tracks from a lot of famous songs. These are great because they are only the bass, although sometimes, depending on the recording, it's bass and something else, vocals or drums or guitar. Uh, it's still great though because it takes away all the distractions and lets you focus on just the bass. Chances are your ears will be kind of magnetically attracted to the melody, which makes it hard to listen to anything else. This is totally normal by the way. This is exactly why I'd play melody notes rather than bass notes when I was trying to figure songs out. It's a super common problem, but if you're using isolated bass tracks, that problem disappears because those distractions just don't exist and you can hear the bass a lot clearer. Like I said though, once you've listened to the isolated track, go back, listen to the full recording. Hopefully, because that bass line will be in your ear, it'll jump out at you in the song. Your ears will probably still want to hone in on that melody, that's normal, but try your best to keep your attention on that bass line. Now, even if you don't want to learn any of the songs you find isolated bass tracks for, I still recommend you go through this process. It'll attune your ears to focusing on the bass line. So, so when it comes time for you to learn whatever songs you want to learn, your ears will already be ready to accept those low frequencies. <laughs> I've put a link uh, to a playlist with a ton of isolated bass tracks for you underneath this video, so hit them up and have a listen. Strategy number two for hearing bass lines. This one seems obvious, but it goes over a lot of people's heads. Use headphones or good speakers when you're trying to hear the bass part. Occasionally, I'll get someone who emails me and asks how they can learn to hear bass lines better. My first question is always, what are you listening on? Every once in a while, they'll email back and say that they've just been using laptop speakers, or even worse, phone speakers. Oh my goodness, please don't do this. <laughs> Technology is improving all the time, it's incredible, but laptop speakers and phone speakers are really not ideal for doing this. They just weren't designed to reproduce those kinds of frequencies accurately. Now, could you get away with it? Sure, if the bass is super clear and has a lot of presence in the mid-range, you could probably hear the bass using phone speakers. However, it'll be much easier if you either use headphones or proper speakers. Even some bass amps have an RCA in, so you can take the audio right out of your phone or computer and put, it through, uh, put the sound through a good speaker with a decent bass response. This will make your life so much easier because you'll be able to hear everything perfectly clearly. This ties into number three, which is using an amp while you're practicing. For a while, when I started out, I didn't actually have an amp to practice with. The high school band I was in rehearsed at the drummer's house and I used his bass amp there. But at home, where I did the majority of my playing, I didn't have an amp. 
so I could barely hear the notes I was playing. As soon as I started using an amp regularly though, I started developing an ear for the low end. I started hearing bass lines a little bit clearer, just a little at first, then more and more and more. Because I was in the habit of hearing and listening to those low frequencies, it got easier and easier. If it's possible for you to use an amp, I can't recommend it enough. If you can't because of the noise, at least use some headphones so you can hear yourself properly. All right, now these three things aren't gonna take you from not being able to hear bass at all to hearing everything overnight. <laughs> They're more long-term strategies that you can use. But what if you need to learn a song now and you can't hear the bass? What do you do then? Well, there's another trick you can use that works way quicker than the three ways I've told you right now, and it involves a piece of software called Transcribe. And Transcribe is one of my favorite tools. It does a whole bunch of stuff. You can slow music down without changing the, pick, uh, the pitch. Very handy for figuring out tricky licks in songs. Uh, but we're gonna use it right now to make it super simple for us to hear the bass notes in a very busy song. Check it out. So we're in Transcribe right here. You've got the waveform of the track uh, right here in the middle. Uh, we can play from wherever we want. So we can go from the start, sounds like this. Jump over here. Go to wherever we want. Uh, right now though, I'm gonna jump close to where it gets super busy towards the end. There, from about there. Yeah? Now, uh, imagine you're trying to figure out the bass line for this track right here. There's a ton of stuff going on. You've got guitars, you've got that super, vice, super fast kind of xyl xylophone or marimba line, whatever they are. The ear is kind of drawn towards them, right? They're easy to hear and they command way more attention than the bass does. The bass is kind of buried underneath all those layers of guitars and drums and everything else. If you're new to this, figuring, figuring out what's underneath everything, it's gonna be super hard, but with Transcribe, we can peel those layers back and get a much clearer idea of what the bass is playing. Here's how to do it. We're gonna to go to this effects button right here, yeah? Now you've got a few options here. You've got the speed, transposition, tuning, mono karaoke. Uh, the speed is actually uh, something kind of cool. You can get super granular on how fast you want the track to go without changing the pitch. Uh, you can actually do this on uh, YouTube now as well, but you have a lot more control with Transcribe. Uh, we'll bypass that for now. Uh, the one we want to look at first is EQ, right here. Now you've got a ton of different options over here on the right. Uh, bass remove, uh, bass select all the way up to top remove, and uh, top select over here. So we want to use the bass select option, because that's what we are looking for, right? The bass. So, it takes away all the uh, frequencies above about 320 hertz, yeah? Now, if we do that, it's gonna sound like this. It sounds kind of weird, right? Like you're listening to it from outside a nightclub or something. That's because all the high end has been taken away, but that leaves us with nothing but the bass, which is exactly what we're looking for. Sometimes doing this is enough to figure out what the notes of the bass uh, line are, but sometimes it seems like a garbled mess. So uh, just in case it does, we can actually go back to this effects uh, control panel right here and go to this tuning knob right here, yeah? So this lets us change the pitch of the whole recording without changing the tempo. Again, pretty sweet, right? Transcribe's a great tool for doing exactly this kind of thing. Now, why do we want to change the pitch in this case? Well, we can take this super low frequency energy that can be tricky to make notes out of and then we'll take it up an octave so the notes are much easier to hear. So if we go over to the far left, we've got these tuning options, octaves, semitones, and cents. We can actually take this up an octave. Yeah? So if we do that, and we go back to the recording. It makes it much easier to hear the bass line, right? It's right there. Yeah, all we have to do now is figure out what notes they are. So if we isolate just the first note, uh, the first uh, note. How about there? It's about the first bar. Cool. Now, uh, now, I don't know what this note is, I haven't got perfect pitch, but let's take a stab in the dark and say that it's a C. So the note we're looking for is Duh. So if I play a C on my bass. Oh, okay, that's not it. That note is too low. But let's take it up uh, fret by fret and uh, see how it goes. So, Duh. Duh. that's the note on the bass. We're looking for this note. Duh. Upper fret. Oh, that's not right either. Let's go up one more fret. 
da. There it is, it's a D. So our first note of that phrase is a D natural. Open D string or fifth fret on your A string. Yeah? All right, awesome, what's next? If we let the track run for a little bit. So da 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 da. Yeah, right there. This is our next note. Now, uh, is that higher or lower than our first note? Yeah, it goes up, right? But not by much. It sounds like it's going up a whole step to me. So from D, D, a whole step above D is E. So let's see if that sounds right. D, ah, perfect. Yes, that's it. We've got our first two notes. We've got D and E. What's next? If we let the track run a bit more. Again, we've got the bass line moving up. And again, to me, it sounds like it's going up a whole step. That would make it an F sharp. Let's try it. F sharp here. That's it. Yeah, so for this phrase, phrase, the bass notes are D, E, and F sharp. Now there is one final trick you can use to check your work, and I recommend doing this last rather than first, because it's better for you to use your ears than rely on the software. But if you go up to a view here, and you go show spectrum, this is a super, super useful tool. Uh, Transcribe will actually analyze the audio and give you what it thinks the notes are, and it will even guess what it thinks the chords are. This is great, it's not always 100% accurate, but it can be handy for checking your work. So let's see what it says about this. So let's uh, go to around about where the first chord is and let's see what Transcribe's saying. Okay, so right here it's got big old peak at this D right here. So there's a pretty good chance that the notes that we'll, our first note is a D and this lines up perfectly with what we predicted, yeah? So we've got a pretty good chance that this is actually a D. So if you actually, sometimes if you select a, oh, ah, if you actually go up to view here as well and you can say show chord guesses and share, show note guesses, it'll actually give you guesses what it thinks it is. This is great. Sometimes it just gives a garbled mess, <laughs> which is totally fine. It might have something to do with the fact that we're using this. Ah, yeah, okay, so if we take the EQ away, it actually tells us we think it's a D add 9 or an A sus 4 over D or E7 sus 4 over D. But either way, D is our, uh, our bass note, almost certainly. Yes, yeah, so let's keep going. Let's go to this and turn the EQ off real quick. Ah, oh, and the tuning off as well. Bypass that. There we go. So this is our second chord right here. We thought it was an E, some kind of E chord. No, now we've got a, oh, where are we? So we've definitely got a big spike at this E right here, which is a good chance, it means it's a good chance that the note we're actually playing was an E. Chord guesses are E minor 11, A13 A sus4 over E, G major 13 over E. Again, it's a pretty good chance that we did well in, guessed it, in guessing that E right there. Perfect, yeah? So let's go to the next one. So it starts right, right around there. So, it's giving it, so sometimes if you, yeah, let's say spectrum too messy or out of tune notes. That's totally normal. But, we thought this, uh, the third note was an F sharp, right? Oh, now we're getting, I was saying it's an F, oh, that doesn't sound right at all. Once again, this is not always completely accurate, but it'll give you a good chance of, uh, of guessing most of the time. In f this one though, it's got notes around that low F sharp. It's saying it's an F and a G, which doesn't sound right to me at all. So... That's definitely an F sharp there. So this one, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with Transcribe right here. <laughs> Yeah? Now, well, like I mentioned, it's not 100% accurate. I've got to stress this as well. Only do this part using the note guesses and the spectrum to check your work. You don't want to be relying on Transcribe to do all the heavy lifting for you. That'll defeat the purpose of doing it by ear. 
By the way, if you want to try this program out for yourself, I've put a link underneath this video where you can get a free 30-day trial. Uh, I ended up buying it because for me, it's the best tool for this kind of thing, and I use it a whole ton. Uh, give it a try, and uh, let me know how you go with it. If you like this video, I definitely recommend heading over to becomebasis.com and signing up to the email newsletter. You'll get my eight-part bass chord pro series as a welcome gift that'll show you all the chords you'd ever need to play on bass. And of course, you'll get a whole lot of subscriber-only videos plus the latest stuff from Become a Bassist. So that's it. Three strategies to build up your ability to hear bass lines over the long term, and one quick and dirty way if you're in a rush and you just need to figure it out in a hurry. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Luke McIntosh from becomeabassist.com, and I'll talk to you soon.